All right, uh, I bought a few of these at the junk store because they were so cheap. They were 15 bucks each, so um, they make great project boxes. Um, this is a, a box specifically intended to drive uh, attenuators and um, HP attenuators, special special connector, and then two uh, uh, two relays here that switch in and out 24 volts. So uh, the way that you use these things is you would hook them up to uh, something like this. This is a a, a coaxial a coaxial relay that that requires 20, 24 volts. And so you, you, there's a binding post in the back. You could connect those up and you can uh, hook this up to, to one of those uh, connections on the backs. And this button would turn it on and this button would, would turn it off. Um, and then there's two of those. So you could control two different, two different relays um, with these two buttons. And uh, the uh, att other attenuators were stepped attenuators. This is an old school one. This is not, uh, you probably can build a cable that went between these two, but um, this one is the uh, old school connector and these have the uh, new school connector on them. Um, and they're uh, a, a four bit digit uh, relay. So uh, I believe they're probably low true. So when you power this thing on, they all go high. So I think it's, uh, uh, you put in the low code for the ones that you want. Anyway, I'm not going to use it for a driver. I'm going to use it for something else. And so I wanted to see, um, it has its own power supply and I was interested in repurposing the power supply. Uh, so let's look inside. Uh, so inside you can see that it's, it's, uh, uh, an old, old school again, it's a transformer and it, it generates five volts and 24 volts. And it has uh, two three terminal regulators. There's the five volt regulator, and over here on, on the side is the 24 volt regulator. They're like LM, LM05, LM7805, and 7824. Here's here are the filter capacitors. So it's very, very, very simple, very, very old school power supply. And I thought, great, uh, maybe I can use the five volt supply as is. That's great. I really don't need 24 volt supplies in projects, but. Uh, might be able to split the 24 volts into plus and minus 12 and that would be good plus 5 and plus and minus 12 That'd be a great uh, a great thing to do for projects uh, So I uh, I got the schematic for the thing and the schematic doesn't really print well uh, It's from it's from and really these things have been around for a long long time uh, Is there a date on this? Uh, well, this was updated on in uh, 2019 but these things have been around much, much longer than that. Uh, certainly from the eighties. Uh, yeah, I don't see original. I don't see an original date on the drawings, but you can tell the drawings are hand hand done and very old. So let me uh, let me show you this power supply on paper, and then we'll go measure it because it's not what I expected. I've never seen a power supply like this before. It's uh, quite unusual. All right, so it's just a simple transformer. And then there's something over here and it does have center tap windings. And so you can make a full bridge rectifier uh, by doing this. And uh, you put a capacitor out here and then you put your three terminal regulator and uh, might have a capacitor on the end of that. There is, there it is. That, that's the entire schematic. Okay. And, and so you're done. So this one's, this one's plus five. And then you would expect uh, there to be a second one for the 24 volts. And you would have the same thing, only it would be, uh, it would be 24, right? And then these would be on the same core. And there might be other windings over here that allow you to do uh, 110 or, or 220 volt. You can strap them, uh, strap them around like that. And uh, this transformer does, that, ha does have a couple windings out here so you can use, use it in different parts of the world. But the output is not like this. The output is like this. Okay. And it has taps here. Okay. And so this one would be, would be grounded. And this one goes out for the plus five and this one goes out 
for the uh, plus 24. So I've never seen a transformer wired this way, right? I've never seen a transformer wired this way where they share the middle, the middle winding here and everything else is wound off of that. It's very interesting. And in fact, the transformer has additional taps. It has another tap here and another tap here that aren't used. So uh, these give you 24 volts. Um, so this is like, uh, you know, plus or minus 12. So I'm not sure what these little guys are in here for, but anyway, it's wound that way. It's, it's wound with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven taps. Uh, very unusual. Uh, so you can see it here. Uh, here it is here. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With the middle one grounded, these going to the five and these going to the uh, going to the twenty four. Very very unusual. All right, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to measure this, and I I found uh, something that might be of value to you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and um, let's let's measure the the AC here. We're going to measure from here to here. We'll measure the AC and then we'll measure the out, out, output of the DC. Okay, so if you take a look at this one, we're going to measure this AC over here. We're going to measure the unrectified, uh, uh, unregulated DC voltage and then the regulated DC voltage. So this needs to be around 8 volts, 7 to 8 volts, and then this can be 5 volts. And for 24 volts, you're going to need something like 30 volts in order to generate 24. All right, so let's take a look at those. All right, I have the voltmeter out here and uh, we're measuring the, the five volt supply and it's giving us uh, 4.996, very nice. And there's another test point over here. Oops, oh, it's hard to do in front of the camera. Oh, come on. There we go, 24.3, okay? So those are the two supplies and um, Let's take a look at the unregulated voltages. So the unregulated voltage on the uh, five volt supply is eight, 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 eight point four volts. That's good. You need about eight volts, and uh, there's about a two volt compliance on the seventy eight oh five. So you need you need at least two volts more than the five volts, and then the uh, compliance voltage on the twenty four is thirty five volts. So quite a bit of compliance there. Um, that might droop a bit when you start pulling current off of these uh, attenuators or something, but it starts out at 35 volts. All right, so that all sounds great. Um, let's measure the AC. Um, let's see here, we'll put the meter into AC mode. And the AC going into the eight volt unregulated starts out as uh, 14 volts AC. All right, so this is RMS. So we have 14 volts uh, RMS gets changed into eight volts DC, gets changed into five volts DC, all right? And then if we go here to the 24 volt section, we have 53 volts um, of uh, true RMS that gets changed into 35 volts that gets changed into 24 volts, okay? Um, so I wanted to take a look at the actual AC waveforms and that's a dangerous thing to do with an oscilloscope because the ground lead of an oscilloscope, um, let's see here's an oscilloscope probe, the ground lead on a regular oscilloscope is grounded. This is earth ground. And if you go putting your ground lead on high voltage things, um, it's going to ground them, right? So it's very dangerous on AC, uh, you know, the, 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 the 110 volt side of things. But also, it's dangerous in blowing up circuits. So um, whenever you ground reference this probe, you're tying it to earth ground. And even though uh, it might be okay to ground one side of this, it's not going to be. Because remember, um, in the circuit, uh, we have the center tap is already grounded. It's already earth ground. So we already have an earth ground here. And if we go, what I want to do is I want to measure the voltage across here. And if I put my, if I put one ground here in the probe here, I'm actually grounding this one out and I'll short this winding out. And that's a really bad thing to do for a transformer. So we can't use an oscilloscope or can we? Um, well, uh, remember I have this, this, uh, this little portable oscilloscope that is completely, uh, 
no earth ground, right? It's completely floating. It's battery powered, so it's completely floating, which means that this probe, I can do anything I want with it, which is great. So this is a great application for this scope. Um, so let's, uh, let's put it on this 53 volt RMS uh, side. Move these out of the way. Now I can reach my scope in and I can tie it to tie earth. Oh, it's not earth ground, it's just ground ground. But they're both sides are floating, so now I can just uh, I can just do that and then the frame there, yeah, see? So now we can look at that waveform and we're under no penalty of grounds. Um, so uh, this is the waveform there and we can look at the RMS voltage. We can change this to RMS and it's measuring 51.6 volts RMS. So that's pretty close to the other meter, right? So we're measuring about 50, 51 volts RMS. Uh, on that uh, connection. But the thing I really wanted to point out was uh, check out the peak to peak. See the peak to peak is 144 volts. <laughs> RMS is, is uh, um, when, once it's rectified and so it's only positive, it's, so it's only half of the waveform and it's only about, um, you know, 70% of the waveform. So um, it, it tricks you into thinking things are pretty safe. Hey, it's only a 24 volt supply. Uh, okay, well, I had to go up a little bit. Okay, it went up to 35 volts. Okay, well, that's still safe. Oh, wait a minute, the AC is 50 volts. Uh, that's that's bah, still safe, you know. But take a look at this. Peak to peak is 144 volts. So that's kind of dangerous, right? If you're over here where it's 110 volts peak to peak, you know, you're like, oh, keep your hands in your pockets, right? And over here on the secondary side, you're thinking, ah, everything is just fine. So I just kind of wanted to point out that even though you think things are fine on the, uh, on the secondary side, they aren't, uh, especially when you have a 24, 24 volt supply. Yeah, 144 volts peak to peak. So yeah, be careful about where you put your fingers.